But any comment about Mike Woods and, you know, where that might stand? Yeah, you know, th there was a couple questions uh, throughout the day on Mike, and, you know, we're aware of the situation and handling it in-house right now and getting gathering all the facts and information, and we'll – We'll uh, we'll move forward and and, uh, and and you know go from there, uh, and we get all the facts and, and lined up. Your message to him though is a as a guy you know who can kind of came with you here. Yeah, you know uh, actions of a few impact many, and his actions uh, impacted a lot of people. And um, so with that, there's an accountability and uh, there's consequences for every decision that's made, uh, good and bad. And so uh, we'll, we'll build on that and move forward. And in the right time, we'll, we'll, we'll gather all our information and, and uh, put the final final synopsis out there. You, you spoke a little bit about the quarterback situation earlier, but you know you'd like to have a decision in preseason camp. At what point? A couple weeks in? Three weeks? You know, it's hard to put a timeline on it right now. Um, you know, I want to watch and see these guys in in a uh, in a setting of, of whether it be a scrimmage setting. Um, and uh, to watch these guys, and what I'm looking for is guys put stringing good days together. Be, be the same guy every day. Um, and, and that's what we're after. And uh, who's going to, when they step on the field, 10 other guys get better and rallies around a football team that, that plays for this guy. Uh, that, that's what we're looking for. And when is that going to be? I don't know. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, uh, at some point in time in camp, we'll, we'll make, a, make a note. Can, can you envision one of the freshmen coming in and really grabbing a starting job? Uh, I, very well could happen. I mean, it, it, we're not we're not saying that no by no no stretch of the imagination. I mean, everybody's going to have their opportunity to come in and and play and start and uh, make an impact on this team at all positions. But uh, I know we've got some talented young men at the quarterback position that we're excited about, and uh, we'll see we'll see how it goes. They're going to get reps, and, and we'll see how they respond. Your first SEC media day is winding down. What what do you? What's your synopsis of the day? It was phenomenal. Uh, it really was. It's such an honor to, to represent the, the entire state of Arkansas and our great university um, here on such a, a very high platform. I've um, been very, very impressed with the, the professionalism um, by everybody and um, the excitement level of college football now we're getting ready to kick off. And so uh, it's been a lot of fun today. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about what's next. Chad, I know you've done a lot of public speaking, but this is live TV and you know, a lot of people in the room. Were you nervous at all, or kind of what was your approach? You know, no, it really wasn't. Um, I, this is who I am, and uh, I, I got a little note that on my opening statement that uh, I wrote at the top. I said, "Just smile, uh, enjoy, and uh, and breathe, and, and have fun." And that's I, I kind of wrote myself a note. Just make sure you're smiling. I mean, this is man, what what a what a great, awesome opportunity we have to impact impact this, uh, this the lives of young men. Because you got uh, three great guys here. In terms of their leadership, what they bring with them. Uh, excited about all three of these young men um, that, that have came in and came with us today. And I had these three guys on my mind from probably back in early March, uh, that these were the three that I was going to take. And um, just watching the, the, these guys perform, watching their leadership, um, watching their hunger, you know, how hungry they are. And, and they know, and, and as they all do, all our players understand that four and eight is unacceptable by whoever the coach is. doesn't matter. That's not this program. That's not our standard, and our standard's best. And uh, these young men get it. They understand it, and they're incredible re leaders. Um, and uh, I look forward to watching these young men grow uh, and, and have success on the football field and off the football field, uh, as well as I do all our young men. Coach, how many analysts do you have on staff right now? And, and also, does the – Headset rule, is that going to impact you guys? Yeah, you know, the headset rule is um, – I'm surprised I didn't get that question until right now. But uh, that's, an, that's a hot topic among head coaches right now. Um, no one really understands what you're going to do yet. Um, with the 20 headsets and only 15 of them can be put into coaches, you can only have – you know, your GAs, your four GAs, your head coach, and your ten full-times, and then your, your medical staff gets and, um, and signalers can get them. Um, and then you, you take guys that uh, your analysts, which were in the box, uh, and we have four, four analysts, um, and you put them on the field in a non-coaching role around, um, you know, in, in, in being where, where personnel change is happening. Uh, it's, it's very uh, – that's a tough situation to put those guys in, but – you know, your GAs and some, your coaches are only allowed in the box. So it's going to be interesting to see the way um, it, is, it is perceived this year and um, 
the scheme that, that, that everybody kind of use. Do you think it helps that a little bit of balance because there's like LSU has 10 analysts and Alabama has a ton? Do you think it, it maybe helps a school that, that has four? Well, you know, the analysts are so valuable to the success of programs and quality controls and uh, because you've got to have them. You've got to have that off-the-field study work going on and um, that's done not necessarily on game day. But on game day, when, you know, the, the quality of people you put in the box have got to be on point. And so what I feel is going to happen is, you know, your GAs now have such a tremendous role of the knowledge that they have in the game of football. They better be on point because they're gonna, a lot of them are going to be in the box. Chad, what's uh, Brandon Martin's status? Is there a potential for him to return? Well, right now, um, you know, where he is today is he's, he's, he's not a part of our roster, um, academic issues, and don't know if he will become part of our roster again. I, I don't know that at this point, but, uh, and that's where we are with Brandon. Is there a chance for him to rejoin the team this season? I do not see that happening right now. Any other additions? Um, you know, there, there could be, um, you know, I'm not at liberty right now to discuss that until it actually happens. Um, but we'll see. Um, but right now we, we, as we shared with our players, um, you know, we're, we're all we got and we're all we want and uh, we're all we need. And, um, these guys are excited about the start of this season. And that's what this is about. It's about the guys that have invested the time and the energy and the effort, um, since we've gotten there and, I mean, you, you saw and talked to three guys today that this is their, their fourth year. This is – some of them, they're in their final four months of football. And, um, man, they're just hoping that their teammate right beside them gives everything they got every day uh, for, their, for them and uh, for this senior class. And that's what I want. I want this senior class to be, to be the ones that, uh, uh, that are going to reap some of the rewards and the benefits of the hard work that they put in. You have a lot of expectations with this team, but there is talent on this roster. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, you can ask those three guys. There's a lot of expectations we have. Um, they have. We have. I have. Um, now everybody else may not have a lot of expectation, but we do. And uh, and I'm excited about that because I know the hunger level and I know the work and the drive that these guys have put in. Um, but uh, you know, I, I just think that these guys have, have, have they've heard it. They 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 understand what's what's uh, what's being said. And uh, man, they, they just. As I've shared with them all the time, just be yourself and be be the guy in the moment and be the best you can be, and all that other stuff will take care of itself. And I promise you, we're we're in a great position right now. We're lying in the weeds, and uh, I love where we're where we're at in this whole situation. I mean, you're, you're one of six new head coaches in this league. What do you think about that kind of turnover? And um, what do you think of the other coaches? What, 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 what was it like when you go into spring meetings and? Other, whatever other opportunities you might have to be around. Yeah, you know, you, you know most of the guys already. I mean, I, I'd known most of them and uh, through recruiting or bumping into them when they were coordinators and on the trail. And uh, so I knew most of them. But, you know, I, to have six turnovers in this league is, is, uh, hadn't happened in quite some time. And so uh, I think there was a lot of, uh, again, a lot of excitement, a lot of, a lot of new faces. But, um uh, you know, again, I, I'm just excited to be the head football coach at the University of Arkansas and, and uh, represent these young men and, and this program. What, what was the inspiration behind studying chop wood, carry water for, you know, for the team, the team reading? Yeah, it, it's, it's all about the process. It's an incredible book. It's one that uh, um, we read uh, a couple of years ago at SMU that we needed, our staff needed. And it just is a, a unique perspective way of putting the process um, in, into a story format that uh, – that you, everybody can relate to. How, how beneficial has that been so far early on in the process? With this team? Yeah, it's been it's been critical. I mean, you know, when when uh, you know you have team meetings or you have our team have a player only meeting and they want to talk about the the process and we'll talk about the the book and and what it means to each position. Um, it, it's pretty special. So we, we have and I always do that. We always have a fourth quarter read that we'll do and discuss as a team. And then we'll have a fall camp read, too, on a book that, uh, that I feel like impacts us, and we'll talk about it as position coaches with our players. And so just another way for us to bond and grow closer together. I don't know if you've been asked about your running back situation, but how good do you feel coming out of spring, seeing what you have here and what you've heard from True and the guys about how they progress this summer and then how you want to utilize them this fall? Well, the guys that uh, in that running back room have, have definitely leaned up. Um, and, and needed to thin down in some areas and gain some strength. And uh, I've been excited after especially getting back in and, 
interacting with them through the course of the summer and um, getting back, all of us getting back in yesterday and just seeing the transformation in their bodies and what they've done as far as the running and the, the, uh, the development of, of them getting ready to, getting ready for fall camp has, has been uh, – I know they're ready. They're excited. And uh, they've put forth the effort. We've asked them, uh, and we've pushed them, and we've asked them, and we've told them and, um, to what it's going to take, and, and they've responded. And we've had a great summer. And uh, I'm excited about the start of this season and see what it see where it goes from there. You said some freshmen spoke up yesterday. Mm -hmm. Santos mentioned Joe Fouché. Mm -hmm. Kind of vocalized a little. Mm -hmm. What do you what have you made of his early start? You know, I, I hadn't seen him work out uh, outside in the weight room. Um, you know, I, he, he's doing some good things out on the field. I'm just talking to some of the players, um, but but for a freshman to walk in and be able to speak up says a lot, and especially about what he's learning through the process. Um, you know, very highly recruited young man and, uh, you know, a guy that we need to play. We, we, we need for him to be ready to provide us the depth that we need. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes with him. A lot of what you want to do starts up front uh, with that offensive line. Uh, just progression they've made and, and some of the stuff you've heard about those guys. Is, is really yeah, you know, Yelda is, is probably addressed a lot of that um, with our O-line. And, and uh, I, I know that – um, Coach Fry's done a, done a great job during spring, during the 15 practices, and putting forth the plan that these guys need, need to do for their skills and drills and their development through the summer. Um, and Yelda's been in charge of that, and, and that has come along really well. Um, I think the biggest thing that we're all going to find is that you're going to have to cross-train a lot of guys because of the lack of scholarship numbers that we have coming in. Um, you know, being able to, to cross-train some guys to get them ready in case of an injury that happens. And so we'll, we'll focus, continue to focus on that as they have this summer. Uh, we'll build on that defensive line. Um, I think with, uh, you know, with Scooter and, and, and those guys, and um, I think that uh, Randy Ramsey needs to have a big year. He's on track to have a, a, you know, a big year. And Gabe Richardson, I mean, it just, we've, we've got some depth. We've got a, we would love to have some of the young guys step up. I, I, We'll see how that goes. We'll wait to fall camp. But we know that the success that we're going to have um, in conference play is going to be determined on the depth that we're able to create in our offense and defensive lines uh, to play the gauntlet of the schedule that we got to play. Have you got a day set for opening up fall camp and just how anxious you yeah. are? Yeah, we're, we're excited. I, hope, I wish we could fast forward to do that. But uh, we've got hideaway meetings next week that every member of our program – um, we'll be a part of, and we'll bring lunch in. Randy will bring lunch in, and we'll go through every every turn and crack and corner in this program that we're – when we walk out from the analysts to the quality controls to the volunteers, they know how this program will be ran, and uh, they'll know the standard that we, we set forth. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll report. We have a big weigh-in, what we call our big weigh-in on August 2nd. Um, and uh, have make a lot of fun with it and have team meeting that night um, to kind of get ready. We've got the process we'll go through doing some things there. And then August 3rd will be our first practice that afternoon. You know when Rakeem Boyd and Dorian Gerald are going to report and how will their late arrival maybe affect what they're able to do this year? Yeah, I, I think a lot will determine. Sure, they should be here in, in the next day or so. Um, and a lot will determine where they are coming in shape, how much work they've put in. And uh, we'll, we don't know that till we get here, uh, get them here. But we do have fall camp to, to kind of push these guys and see where they're at and see when they're ready. And um, these guys will be ready to go, though. Hey, you you open with saying that Coach Fry works up a sweat in the meeting room demonstrating stuff. Um, yeah. But have you seen him do that? What, what do you think of that? It's not often you hear about a coach work up a sweat in a, in a meeting. No, yeah, that's, that's Coach Fry. That's Dustin. And uh, he's, uh, you know, he's very even keel. Um, but he is a guy that teaches through example. He wants to be out, to get out there and show them what he wants done, not just tell them, but show them. And um, I think that resonates with these guys. I really do. And, and just the feedback I've heard from them is they like that. They like the fact that he's able to critique their technique and critique their footwork and then show them what he wants done. And, um, and that's, that's why I feel like Dustin's one of the best in the country. Yeah, and Dustin ain't shared yet. No, no, I don't think he has. Not yet, anyways, that I know of. Yeldon may know. So they're keeping him from me if they are. I'll take it out of his paycheck, I guess. So, no, it's good. It's all good. Well, I appreciate y'all coming out. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.